All right, hello and welcome to Answering Atheism, episode 28. 28. I did 29, now I did 20, now I'm doing 28. I guess I'm working backwards. We still got to do 27, but we're just going from shortest expected to longest expected video. But anyhow, it is um, nice uh, to be able to give a casual discussion and for folks to tune in as well. Um, first off, I'd like to give the basics. Um, what this show is, is I take the Christian side of things. I pick out one, 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 one comment, secular, atheist, evolutionist type comment from off the web. Uh, whatever I think might uh, be interesting for the show or um, whatever I think I could answer. Um, some are more m militant than others. You know, it's it's a good mix. Um, and uh, none have gotten to me too much, but nonetheless, you never know. Um, I'll try and stay level. But, uh, but other than that, uh, typical intro stuff. We got the tie. Yep, show off the tie. And then uh, now we can get to the comment, the actual comment. Um, but other than that, uh, I do want to briefly say that ideally, 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 I want to be able to uh, craft these in at under five minutes. Under five minutes, do an episode every, uh, every one be under five minutes. Uh, imagine how, how much we would be able to spread our butter if we didn't like that instead of you know 30 45 minutes or something like that goodness people would be much more interested if they were only five minutes i would imagine so um that's the goal uh who knows if we'll ever reach that i'm sure some videos will be very short but that's the goal to get them shorter so that we can make many more videos i mean in the time span of a 30 minute or 45 minute that would be one six to um, six to nine six to nine videos instead of just one yeah a lot more potential and uh, better numbers and probably better reach uh, if we did more but anyhow now we get to the comment now that you know the goal um, and our current goal is to get to 50 videos. Um, so now the comment, now the comment. All right, here's the comment. Ready? Ready, ready, ready. This uh, individual asks, why are there so many religions and more than 3,000 recognized deities? Well, Thankfully, the uh, Bible gives us some, uh, for this side of the fence, some basis for that. Uh, number one would, probably the source, um, the initial source, would be the fall. Uh, Genesis 3, uh, man's first sin against God, that would be the initial um, the initial cause, and then the um, more di more uh, direct later on cause would be the um, Tower of Babel, Babel, Babel event, um, which divided folks up, spread them out, and but there's a little bit more info in there, but um, but that's essentially essentially the quick overview. If you wanted to X and A now before we get into the a longer version of everything, but um, this individual says three thousand. Well, as far as I'm aware, um, Hinduism, which uh, are um, are uh, previous video uh, 
episode 27 will be based on where oh man is that going to be fun to give a speech on but I, i'm afraid it's going to be too dang long of a video but hinduism has worlds more than that worlds more than three thousand worlds more worlds more so much greater than three thousand so um as far as i can recall it was hundreds of millions hundreds of millions hundreds of millions boy sounds like they got a much more broad version of i guess what was going on with the greeks and stuff like that um and uh other ancient sieves like egypt they had they had ones for different things but <clears throat> but anyhow the uh the cause the cause of the hundreds of millions of uh individual deities gods uh, whatever they're they're uh, coming up with and worshiping is uh, number one uh over there uh particularly india is what we're speaking of uh they as far as i'm aware have you know huge population what um who knows what um 1.2 1.4 billion i don't know i don't know what the number is but that in combination with that with their hinduism beliefs uh, as far as i'm aware uh families and individuals are encouraged to have their own deities but those all of them all of them due to their beliefs are and we'll get into this much more in the previous video but all of those that they've made all of them are an illusion that's what they believe as far as i'm aware they're all an illusion they're all the same one so when they make a new one it's different and yet it's the same um it might have a different uh, different purpose that individuals make out of it you know it being for this or for that or to protect against this or that or whatever the case um but nonetheless with with their beliefs that the differences are just an illusion um it would be the same as a different one having a different purpose um so it kind of it kind of creates this just infinite buffet of you know idols um it it reminds me a little bit of you know greeks greeks and uh what was it pantheon parthenon something um and that had you know its own host as well all these different ones that you could worship um and them having you know different nature type having to do with different type of nature things um um water fire fertility probably more associated with fire but I, <laughs> um but anyhow jokes aside uh because we're having fun with this we have fun but um more tidbits in there would be um on this side of the fence would be um you see there in genesis early on 
one, two, um, man and God, man and God, designed for um, fellowship, worship, a relationship. And by the time you get to into chapter three there, you soon reach the fall. And with the fall, that relationship gets fractured up, gets torn apart. So there's a distance. There's a distance that needs to be jumped. Um, Adam, Adam fell, and Eve was from Adam's side, so she fell. Um, he was the lead, and then um, with him being the top dog type of a deal, um, all after him had fallen as well. He was uh, our representative. Um, but anyhow, so that's another tidbit. Um, and we get into the separation bit. Uh, let me let me dish out some verses. Genesis 3, 8 through 10. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden, Adam and Eve, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife, Eve, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? God knew, but it's what uh, you can totally see the child parent type uh, parallel in this bit. They know they're guilty and they're hiding. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So he realized, he realized, he was guilty, he was guilty. He went against God's word, he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and he was, they were, they were hiding, they were afraid, there's where fear, anxiety, um, all that kind of bad stuff entered the fray as well. Um, And they hid themselves. One of the reasons is because of uh, one of the consequences. God said that they would die. So, kind of interesting. Anyhow, so, so the uh, throwing it back, the reason of the deities is like this. Thankfully, uh, the Bible gives us a basis to have a position on this type of a thing. You know, this, this type of a question, it's a really good question. Um, you know, not a crazy militant question or anything like that. Um, a really good question. I like these. Um, but if you think of it like a, like a career, like a career, Something goes wrong, uh, something gets botched, you get fired. Um, so one is going to seek a replacement job, a replacement job. Let's apply that. Uh, I'm trying to give a, a parallel here. So we got, so at the start you had God, Adam and Eve, good relationship, then separation a fall now uh, sin has um, become a divider in between God and man and uh, you have the separation so there there becomes a void there becomes a void that there wasn't once was so 
with a void would arise replacements to fill the void. Um, you know, if you make uh, griddle sandwiches, you love griddle sandwiches, um, the griddle sandwich maker goes haywire, you gotta toss that sucker out, chances are you're gonna get a replacement. And, uh, you know, um, over a little bit of time or this and that, um, you, it might not, you know, be quite the same or it might be a different model or even a different brand or whatever the case. It might have different add-ons or little um, details or a grease catcher or spare uh, whatever there plate bits to it things like that but um, anyhow let's get into Babel let's get into Babel here let's get into Babel Tower of Babel event you know um, uh, maybe around um, 4,300 um, years ago. I don't think it's, no, it's not BC. Yeah, it's it, 4,300 years ago because flood was like 4,400. So, global flood. So, Tower of Babel was like around, um, as far as I've studied it out, around a hundred years later or so. Um, and there with uh, Nimrod and Sammy Ramis, um, it is it is believed that uh, there at the Tower of Babel, that is where um, the original uh, sun and moon worship type stuff came from and I don't know potentially the uh, planet type deities who knows uh, and you know possibly um, a whole host of other things pertaining to nature um, and then you have where it hits the fan here, um, the dispersion event. Um, God spreads them out. They rebelled against what he wanted. God steps in to fix things, to keep things on a certain path. And that dispersion um, would forge the nations. Um, all the people groups get split up, the languages. Um, all become different and thus within that with their ideas of sun and moon god type thing it would you know have them all essentially have their own versions their own deities of the kind of originals uh, of what they had come up with there So they were, you know, kind of fighting against God's command to spread out. They were worried about sinning again. They knew they were going to sin against God and anger God. And they, they did not believe uh, on God's covenant, rainbow covenant, that he would not do a new global flood. God said he wouldn't. Um, the rainbow is a covenant for token, a uh, visual symbol for that. Obviously today it, it's uh, for the past, who knows, maybe three, three, four decades used for something 
much different, but um, you know, Alaska Gunn said he wouldn't flood, do a new global flood. <clears throat> Obviously, if it was a local flood, that can't pan out, uh, or else God would be a liar. So that position does not hold, so it has to be global flood. Um, and it still holds true today. Uh, no new global flood uh, as judgment. So, and then we get into some verses. Um, uh, Genesis 11, and the whole earth was of one language and one speech. <clears throat> and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. Um, they were continuing in chapter 11 of Genesis uh, 4 through 6. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So it had all these different purposes. Now, here's where the big man steps in. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So, sounds like um, they were going to advance a bit too fast for God's timetable there, perhaps. Continuing on, verses 7 through 9, Go to, let us go down. Who is God talking to? He's talking to himself the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three, yet one. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Now, you know, we have uh, pretty much all the aftermath of that. We got all the different nations, people groups, um, all going back to that event, however many there were after a hundred years or so, um, and then them through uh, Noah's three sons, and then thus Noah and his wife, and thus all the way back to Adam and Eve. Um, oh. So, who knows if it was groups of people or just uh, pairs of two people, but each got their own language and the others thus not being able to easily understand or anything like that. Uh, they were split up in the air, scattered about. Um, so God directs them uh, back to his master plan, what's going on and what's going to come about. And uh, then you got the knowledge of God and um, all the information pre-flood, well, not all, but a lot of pre-flood info Noah would have, and thus his sons, and thus that would, things would get relayed. So Babel, the Babel type stuff, affirms what was prior. It affirms what was prior because of what they did. They were afraid it could happen again, the global flood. So 
very key event um, and and due to the them forging their own gods and getting scattered abroad and the languages getting divided up uh, thus it got multiplied essentially um, a very interesting thing very very interesting topic in regards to all this is um, if you want to do a little research is ancient Chinese pictographs they are essentially a secular uh, extra-biblical source affirming Genesis it is fascinating fascinating stuff but uh, you got things like uh, this is China like uh, longest lasting civilization with their kind of history intact or whatever the case um, but uh, um, <clears throat> this ancient Chinese pictograph type thing in the Chinese language or whatever ancient Chinese language that that probably was one of the one of the ones from Babel and it's stunning that all that could be preserved within one of those languages um, pictures having meanings um, I, I don't remember them all but um, there's at least three books on the topic that I'm aware of um, one is one symbol is um, I think for boat or big boat or something like that or whatever the case is has to do with eight mouths eight mouths are part of like boat or big boat or something like that or or flood or something um, and eight mouths Noah Noah his wife his three sons their wives eight people eight mouths so and then <clears throat> there were other things as well um, what was there I don't know I, I don't remember but anyhow so we went from God to gods it, it quickly drifted um, pre-flood got horrible so God brought judgment um, had to direct things um, so in replacement of God we might have all sorts of things more so than even deities more so than deities or idols um, little deity type idols but we might have other things because that is gone uh, we might we might have our top thing be money fame power uh, materialism pleasure you name it you name it um, it could be um, you know just pushing other people around you know depends on what you weigh but um, so I guess we're kind of getting towards our conclusion here so so with God you have infinite perfect creator judge redeemer a trinity um, all-knowing all-powerful uh, omnipresent um, all that type of stuff so in the end with such um, being redeemed is a free gift uh, through or on and through what Jesus did dying and rising again the third day uh, so that you could be redeemed you have to accept um, God ain't gonna force it on you 
it's your choice. Long time ago, I chose, I chose, I accept. That is a darn good deal. And I love a good deal. I love a good deal. That's the best deal. It is the best deal. It is really the best deal. And it's God's works, not man's works. Man cannot uh, redeem himself, make himself righteous to God. You need perfection only found through Jesus, considering Adam botched it. Adam botched it. Eve was blonde, in my opinion. So, we got historical record, eyewitness from the start, um, consistency internally, but also externally with uh, archaeology, historical figures. Come on. Come on. Um, you know, you got, you got even different information about the Bible. You got the, this whole host of different writers, all sorts of different people, having different books that comprise the Bible. Very diverse, um, over thousands of years, yet with all their differences, you get one story and even a world of prophecy. The, the, the prophecies were um, all pertaining to Jesus were pretty much impossible to fulfill them all um, through odds or chains. <clears throat> you know, some you, could, you might be able to control, but others you cannot control. You just cannot control all of the criteria. Um, but yeah, one story. Man botched it, and yet God, um, yet God willing to have us get redeemed. Him dying, what was introduced at the fall, death, God using through death the greatest thing redemption redemption to make people righteous right with him so that they can live forever with him rather than apart from him and people just throw out all these labels at God, you know. Those individuals are not ready for the gospel. They're not ready to be saved. It's a free gift. Um, nothing we did to earn it or anything. Not diddly squat. And yet, God still reaches out. Still reaches out. Because God's good. God's good. God's good. Still reaches out. So, uh, just real quickly, with Buddhism, you know, we we don't we don't need to attain peace with the world and God through our efforts. Um, Buddha died and is still dead. Um, you know, peace with the world that would be a false peace between them and an infinite God. They're, they're, they think their works can do the trick. Can't do the trick. Um, Christians have the real peace. Um, John 16, 33, if you let me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Things don't go perfect as a Christian. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The world. Hinduism, we don't need to do endless good deeds to earn our way back 
into uniting with God, you can, you can sometimes see some little similarities. And yet those kind of things kind of alludes back towards the genuine article, the real deal. Um, you can all, it's, it's always certain details that are different, you know, instead of God doing it, you got to do it. You got to do it. You can't reach that ladder. You can't climb it. You can't climb those steps. Um, So, endless good deeds aren't gonna aren't gonna earn you anything. God did everything for us. God, second person of the Trinity, Jesus, dying, rising again the third day, is our new representative, the new Adam, the final Adam, and. Um, He rose again the third day. You know, the Gospels talk about that. Um, the eyewitnesses, the this and the that. There's a lot of very fascinating details. The um, uh, the group of folks essentially admitted, essentially admitted that there was no body um, because. What was it? They wanted, they wanted them to lie or something. So very interesting stuff. It's a lot of little little details that you got to look through. A lot of little details. You can go through the Bible and find 